Today I want to demonstrate how to set up a system tray icon in a WPF application. So what exactly is a system tray icon? Well, if we take a look down here on the Windows taskbar, we can open up this system tray. And as you can see, there's a bunch of icons here representing some of the applications running on my computer. So I can click these. For example, we got Logitech right here. I can click this and actually open up the application or close it out to get some about information. So I want to implement one of these in my demo application just to provide quick access to the application from the system tray. And you can also do some interesting things like notifications to the desktop, which we're going to demonstrate as well. So the two main benefits of this are the quick access from the system tray and notifications. So let's begin by just getting an icon to appear in the system tray for our application when it starts. And to do that, we are going to use a notify icon. So let's just instantiate a notify icon. And if we look at this, as you can see, there's no import for this. And we actually have to add a reference to system.windows.forms. So let's add that reference. There we go. So we got the reference. And now the issue with that is that this system.windows.forms namespace also has an application type, which is going to conflict with our WPF application type in system.windows. So what I'm going to do is alias this namespace so that I don't have to fully qualify it everywhere. And I'll just call it forms. And now I can use that alias in front of my notify icon. There we go. So let's continue instantiating this icon. There we go. And now that we have the icon, let's set its visibility to true. And before we make it visible, let's actually set its icon to. So we can set the icon. So we will just create a new icon. And this is from the system.drawing namespace. And as you can see, we can't find that namespace because we are missing an assembly reference. So if we control dot on this, we actually get two options. We can add a com reference or we can install a NuGet package. Now I tried doing the com reference, but for some reason that didn't work. So we're just going to go with the NuGet package. Just install the latest version here. I didn't look into why the com reference doesn't work, but I would assume it has something to do just with .NET Core. But anyways, we can now instantiate this icon and we can just point it to a file. So I have some resources over here. I have a PNG and an ICO, and this is just the good old Singleton Sean logo. So let's try the PNG first. So the path to that is resources slash icon.png. And we actually get an error here because we cannot find the path to our PNG icon. So the reason for that is because this PNG does not get copied to our output directory when we build. So if we take a look at the properties, we can copy this to the output directory. We'll just do copy always. And let's try this again. And now it says the picture must be a picture that can be used as an icon. So it turns out PNGs are not acceptable. I even resized this to, I think, 48 by 48, which I thought would be OK. But it turns out we do have to use the ICO. So let's change that and make sure this gets copied to our output directory. There we go. The application starts. And down here, we got our icon. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the transparent background, so it doesn't look too nice. But if we open this up, there is our icon. But it doesn't really do anything. Like, we click it, we right click it, there's no context menu. So let's fix that. Now, before we get into fixing those things, my application stopped, but my icon is still down here. So why is that? Well, the notify icon actually needs to be disposed when the application closes or whenever you're done with the icon. So what we're going to do is move this to a field in our app class. So let's generate a field for that. And we can actually make this read only and instantiate it in the constructor. That way it'll never be null. Let's fix these names here. And now we can override the apps on exit. And when we exit, we can dispose of our icon. So before we test this, let's just get rid of this one. And to do that, we can just hover over it and it goes away. So that's all good. All right, so here we go. Our icon was created. Let's X out and take a look and our icon is now good so it gets properly cleaned up so let's keep on exploring some features of the notify icon so another thing we can do is set some text on it so I can set this to singleton Sean so now when I hover over it it says singleton Sean you might want to make that say like your application name that could be useful we can also register a bunch of different event handlers so one common one is whenever you click the icon we might want to open the window if it's minimized so we'll set the main window window state to normal and then we can call main window dot activate to bring it to the front so now if I minimize come down to my tray click my icon there we go we get our window so that's a nice accessibility improvement there as you can see this notify icon has a pretty rich API I don't think we're gonna get to everything 
But another important thing that you can do is have a context menu. So whenever you right click, you get a bunch of different actions that you can take. So to do that, we have to initialize the context menu strip on the icon. So a new forms context menu strip. And let's add some items to the context menu. So items, add. So all kinds of different method overrides here. You could instantiate the tool strip item, then add it. Or you could just pass in some simple parameters like text, an image, an event handler, and it'll create the tool strip item for you. So we're actually going to do that pretty easy. So we'll have one for status. An image. We'll go ahead and add an image just for demo purposes. Image from system.drawing. So from file, and we'll just grab our resources icon. Same thing that we have set on our notify icon. And then we can have an event handler in here. So on status clicked, we'll generate a method for that. And we'll just pop a message box in here. So there we go, just application is running. Little information box. Dang it, I spelled resources wrong. Okay, let's fix that. Now right click the notify icon. And there we go, we get our status and let's click that. There's also the icon on this tool strip item. And there we go, we get our status, application is running. So the event handler and the context menu strip item is working. So all kinds of fancy things you can do with this context menu strip to make your application more accessible from the system tray. I also wanna show off some different tool strip items that you can add. So using this tool strip item method overload. So as you can see, we can just pass in a tool strip item. Now tool strip item, if we take a look at that in the forms namespace, is actually the abstract class. So there's tons of classes that derive from tool strip item. So let's take a look at some of those. So one of those is tool strip label, which is really just focused on showing text. You can also have an image in there, hyperlinks, and you can have click handlers too. So it I mean, you could kind of use it as a button as well. So we will just throw some text in there. Now, there's also a tool strip button, and we'll just keep this the same as the tool strip label. Just pass in text, just so that we can see the differences between those two. And then there's a lot more, but the last one I'm going to show off is a tool strip drop down button. And the drop down button can have a bunch of drop down items. So let's just copy in a tool strip label in here. Let's go ahead and add two just for fun. Make sure these are different. So here's the label, as you can see, just text, hover over it, not much to that. Then we have the button, and if you hover over this, we get the blue background, so it kind of feels like a button with the hover effect. And then last but not least, we get the drop down, and if we click that, we can see all the child tool strip items as well. All right, so the context menu is really nice, and just having an icon for your application down here is cool, but it's called the notify icon. And the coolest part is the notification, so let's get into using those. So whenever I click this notify button, I want a little notification to pop up in the corner here. So kind of going MVVM here, I now have a notify view model that I set as the data context for my main window. And this notify view model has a notify command. And since this is the data context for my main window, I bind the notify button on my view to the notify command. So all we have to do in this command execution is take our notify icon and show a balloon tip, kind of a weird name for a notification. But we can set a timeout, how long we want the notification to display. And this is in milliseconds, so we'll do three seconds. Then we can set a title, so we'll just say Singleton Sean. Set the content text, be sure to subscribe. And then all kinds of tooltip icons, so we're gonna just do an info icon. We'll notify. And there we go, there is our notification. So we can also handle clicks to the notification as well. So we can handle a balloon tip clicked event. And inside here, we'll just drop another message box. Not really anything meaningful, but I want to just show this off. So we'll notify, then we'll click the notification, and there we go, we hit our message box. So that's kind of just like a notify icon crash course. Going over the basics, including the basic icon and text properties, handling some events, setting up a context menu, and supporting notifications, also known as balloon tips. I also quickly showed how you can get this going in an MVVM application, just passing the notify icon to your commands and using it there. So hopefully at this point, you kind of get the gist of the notify icon and its power and how to use it. But in the future, I do want to do a video where I actually incorporate this in a more advanced application, because right here, we kind of just did like a little crash course where we went over the basics and how to use it but I want to show how you can really get it going throughout an application so stay tuned for that probably gonna have that out very soon but other than that if you have any questions criticisms or concerns 
be sure to leave them below in the comments section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.